with a fraction of compute that is spent on training that is pre-training versus post-training change significantly in favor of post-training in the future? Yeah, there are some arguments for that. I mean, right now it's a pretty lopsided ratio, but you could argue that the uh, output generated by the model is like high quality compared to, or higher quality than what much, uh, most of what's on the web. So uh, it sort of makes more sense for the model to uh, think by itself um, instead of just um, like training to uh, imitate what's on the web. So I think there's a first principles argument for that. And um, I would say we found a lot of gains through post-training. So um, I'm not sure. So I would expect us to keep um, like pushing this methodology and probably increasing the amount of compute we put into it. Mm. The current GPT-4 has a ELO score, ELO score that is like 100 points higher than the original one that was released. And... Is that all because of what you're talking about with these improvements that are brought on by post-training? Yeah, I would say that we've, um, I would say that most of that is post-training. Interesting. Um, so there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of different uh, separate axes for improvement. Like you can, uh, yeah, so it's, we think about um, like data quality, data quantity, just doing more iterations of the whole uh, process of deploying and collecting new data and like changing what you're, what kind of annotations you're collecting. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that stack up, but together they give you a pretty good, um, like effective compute increase. How much of a moat is better post-training? Uh, currently companies that distinguish themselves by, well, how big is our model and so forth. Uh, will it be a big moat who has figured out all the finickiness that you were talking about earlier with regards to uh, all this data? I think there's something of a moat because it's just a very complex uh, operation and there's uh so it takes uh you have to have a lot of uh skilled people doing it and uh so there's a lot of tacit knowledge and uh um there's uh a lot of organizational knowledge uh that's required so um so i think um yeah i think post training uh like to create a model that actually um like has all the need the functionality people care about um uh, is a pretty complicated, uh, it re requires a pretty complicated effort. Um, so, and, and this, um, requires a lot of, this is basically an accumulation of a lot of R and D. Um, so I would say, um, I, I would say that makes it somewhat of a moat that it's not trivial to uh, spin this up immediately. Uh, it does seem like, um, like the same companies that are putting together the most serious uh, pre-training efforts are also putting together the serious post-training efforts. So uh, it, it seems like it is somewhat um, somewhat possible to copy or, or to to spin up more of these efforts. Um, th there's also like one force uh, that sort of makes it less of a mode is that you can uh, like distill the models uh, or you can take someone else's model and uh, clone the outputs or you can uh, use someone else's model as a judge uh, to like do comparisons. So I think uh, like the, the more big league people probably aren't doing that because it goes against uh, terms of service policies, but, and it would also be a, a sort of hit, hurt to, hit to their pride, but I would expect some of the smaller players are doing that to get off the ground. What, what makes for somebody who's really good at doing this sort of RR research uh, I hear it's super finicky, but like, what, what is the sort of intuitions that you have that enable you to find these ways to mess with the data and set up these environments? I'd say I just um, have a de decent amount of experience at this point from uh, like the different parts of the stack from like uh, RL algorithms, obviously, since, since I've worked on those since uh, grad school uh, to like... Uh, the data collection, uh, like the annotation process, uh, to, um, like language playing with language models. So I, I mean, I'd say I just dabbled with these things and, uh, I'd say the people who, um, do well at this kind of research, uh, have some view of the whole stack and have a lot of curiosity about the different parts of it. And, uh, also sort of think about, um, well, you want to be both empirical, um, and, uh, like, use experiment, let experiments update your views, but you also want to think from first principles somewhat like, uh, what, um, uh, like assuming that, um, like learning, uh, works, uh, like what would be the ideal type of data to collect yeah. and that sort of thing. 